Welcome to Journeys into Enlightenment with Janet. Join Janet and her friends as they gather at the intersection of consciousness and self-experience, what being consciousness in human form is all about. Access heart-centered awareness with them and feel the difference in the moment that will last a lifetime. Hello, and welcome to Journeys into Enlightenment with Janet. I'm Janet Barrett. I am happy that you are here to experience our last episode in 2020 with me. We have gone many places this year with our friends and guests and the myriad of paths that enlightenment will take us on. None of our journeys are exactly the same for each of us, but as we have seen this year clearly demonstrated, we are all connected in some common points of interactions. Oneness is a reality. We do affect one another, whether they are family members or the clerk in the store, the fella standing next to you, or a stranger sitting next to you eating their meal. You reach beyond your physical form. You share the air between you and what you each breathe into it. Here we share in consciousness, in beyond our physical form. That is not a contradiction. We go inward to go outward beyond where we think our safety lies. For as core essence, there is no safety issue. That is a concern for the body form. When you expand into and beyond your body form and mind that drives your daily life, you realize that this is only the illusion of your self-created definition you call self. We are ready to be done with 2020. What do the stars, angels, and our inner wisdom have to say about that? Today we will explore how this is a perfect time for a new year with Crystal Pomeroy. Joining me is my recent guest, Crystal Pomeroy. She is a metaphysician, astrologer, angel communicator, healer, and scholar. She holds awareness of global cultural historical references out of our past. Listen in and you will enjoy with us as we mark this timely reminder of the past, present, and future realms of being and being alive. If you haven't had a chance to, be sure and listen in to episode 51. Crystal was my guest, and we found many avenues and portals to explore together. I decided on the spot to ask her help us finish off our year. I will mention her highlights here again. You can find all the correct spellings at this, our episode 52 podcast website page. From her childhood, Crystal Pomeroy has been developing her natural talents and skill sets that include healer, astrologer, teacher, writer, speaker, spiritual growth facilitator, television, and radio host. She is a scholar, a collector of myths and stories from numerous cultural antiquities. Originally from Northern California, Crystal studied Spanish and Latin American studies at UC Berkeley. Since college, she has been living in Mexico, where she has continued her studies of different Native traditions for many years. She currently hosts her own weekly radio show in Mexico City. You can read her monthly predictions and tips and her daily success guide in Daykeeper Journal at www.daykeeperjournal.com. Author of the upcoming Llewellyn book, Angelic Intelligence, she is the founder of Vibrational Science, Divine Unblocking, and Angelic Constellation Methods. Her teachers and students through her Alchemy Empowerment Sessions offer sustaining ongoing support for orphanages and the elderly and others in need in the Mexico City area. 
You can reach Crystal for alchemy, empowerment, and unblocking sessions, various courses working with angels, and in-depth astrological and numerological charts at crystal underscore clear always at yahoo.com or through her website www.crystalpomeroy.com. Follow her on Facebook as Crystal Pomeroy, author and healer, and on Instagram as Crystal underscore clear always. In this episode, we are talking of cycles that have the flows that self interprets as endings and beginnings in their rhythms. Whether in terms of feeling the circadian rhythms of body form, earth, in astrological terms, in planetary terms, all is in movement, coming in and out of our focus and awareness. These cycles encompass our sense of time and space. Oh, hello, Crystal. Thank you for joining me again. Thank you, Janet. It's a true privilege and also really interesting always to interchange <laughs> with you. <laughs> I can say that, too. With you, you you take us so many places. It's been a delight. Um, this time we're going to, we're, so, we're considering the end of a year, the beginning of another. And you were the perfect person, even though we just talked uh, about the solstice, to consider we realized that this would be a good place to expand into. And I wanted to offer that to everyone. So thank you very much for um, your connection. Thank you. And your, your good, great heart and spirit in making the time for us. So everybody, we're going to be talking about we're all done with 2020. I think we're probably, that's probably global. And we want to know what the stars and angels and our inner wisdom has to say about this. And Crystal has this marvelous background of being an angel communicator, a metaphysician, and a scholar about all kinds of traditions. And she lives in Mexico City. And she really appreciates those cultural influences. So she's the perfect person to talk about all this big background. And is there anything else that you can see right off the top we want to cover and we'll get into later, Crystal? Um, well, it's interesting. I mean, these times that we live in, besides uh, the ancestral knowledge that we are having continually strengthened access to, the scientific standpoint that um, is showing us with uh, it's it's been a controversy and some scientists have tried to hold us back. But um, I mean, hold this knowledge back in terms of the public receiving it because they think it sounds too mystical or whatever. But um, it's been proven time and again that our mind influences uh, events and not only in the present, but also in the past. And so uh, we'll bring in a little bit of that. And um, although I think a lot of probably your listeners have already had a lot of experiences of <laughs> manifesting intention and yeah. um, opening doors to uh, higher power and so forth. Um, it's always interesting to get more breadth in our, in our understanding. And also um, you had Janet said that you were interested, you felt guided to um, have something about the angels. That's how we uh, originally connected. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. I would, I've been thinking about that, that um, guidance of yours and how moving into a new year with um, really kind of a lot of uncertainty in terms mm -hmm. of um, mm -hmm. we don't really know uh, what direction some world phenomena are going to take. And with, we've got Uranus and Taurus and Taurus being um, our security and Uranus being the planet that's been shaking us up. Um, in Taurus and for um, since last year, since uh, um, actually since the end of um, 2019, this has been a, a constant. It was going in and out a little before that with its retrogrades. But anyway, the um, shaking up of our known uh, security. And um, so the power of the angels and the power of our intention are, are two great uh things to to remember because so much of spirituality is that it's um remembering things that we either know we've read them already or we've we know them intuitively and in this case 
Um, uh, I, I think it's great to start with a reminder that the angels are with us in these processes. There have been um, a lot of uh, planetary change predi- changes predicted for um, centuries, and many people speak of the era of Aquarius, and there are different, the age of Aquarius, different predictions about when that began or when it's going to be begin. But uh, there is some consensus that right now is uh, we don't have to look very far to figure it out, even if we don't believe in astrology or uh, cosmic eras, that there's there are a lot of earth changes going on. And so um, the the angels um, are are right with us, right with all of us, and they are supportive, um, kind, wise energies that will help us when we ask them to. They need that because they respect our free will. And they particularly help us with everything related to our spiritual awareness, our focus, our uh, clarity with intuition. And um, that's that's such a great thing to take into account, knowing that we're entering into this new cycle ahead uh, 2021 with this company and assistance so we're not alone in whatever we're working on and also that our intention is is very powerful so those are those are just two things that to that i think are good to remember (laughs) you you have such a marvelous body of information i did not mention i forgot to mention that you were the astrologer so that's one thing that really accentuate the the whole package that you offer us so everyone let's take this time she's mentioned so many wonderful awarenesses that we've mentioned in the past and also uh, a lot of new information and we want to check our energies and see where we're at and as we embrace the unfolding the undoing in so many different ways as this year comes to an end and as a new year begins. We want to be at that transitional place and be present in it. So everybody, just notice your breath. Hmm. And then notice your heartbeat. And allow them to sync up. We are always the core essence. And that's what we tag the breath to be at times. But it's always present. And the heartbeat. Both are the symbols of being in a body and being alive. And so as we match up and bring that heartbeat into the fold of being, and that is the breath, just notice what deepens, what it gets expansive, what let go of. Just let mind and the story illusions of self that keep us in our daily grinds or in our daily delights. And that's a premise. Maybe we're switching from the the the, the grind of daily life into the delight of daily life. And we'll check in with Crystal about that later. But let's see about putting that out there. There is nothing that we can't experience as wonder when we let go. Let go of expectations. Let go of the story elements. And just be present. And Crystal brings this wonderful opening into the heavens where our guest Anne brought us the wonderful deepness of Earth. So this podcast, Morphic Field, has got such an expansive nature here. And just be, just notice what being is about. And unfold. That's what this time with Crystal and I will be about. Let it be active, transcendent reality. And as we've gone through our holidays and will continue through them, Just embrace. Put your arms out and feel the embrace to you and you to it, to them, to others, to just the delight of the spectrum.
There we go. We got a lot of shift going on in there, Crystal. What are you noticing in this moment? I'm noticing that something that I've already said before, and I don't want to sound to sound like I'm I'm buttering you up or something, but <laughs> I've never I've never seen uh, anybody introduce uh, uh, transmission audio transmission. I've been a lot of radio programs over the years, and I've had some of my own. And the way that you move into it with this uh, taking the listener, including me, because I'm um, Part moving of it. with your kids into this. <laughs> Uh, connection with something that's beyond the physical aspect of the audio transmission is quite uh, exceptional. Oh, and I appreciate you. it. Thank you very much. So in being present, let's talk about, do we talk about the end before the beginning? Is that the way it kind of works or is it because it's always about transcendence to me? So you are someplace probably wanting to get someplace. And it's either to get someplace to be different from what you know, or you're on this journey, right? And you don't know what's coming up. You just know that you're here and it's there. And how do I get to it? Does that make sense? Yeah, it sure does. And it makes me think about lineal time. I mean, with you, we can get into so many different um, topics, but um, because you have this breadth of knowledge, but uh, when it comes to lineal time, this is actually an illusion of the world of appearances. And the because in the divine wavelength, the divine reality, there is no limitation, including the limitation of time. Mm -hmm. And um, so when we think about the other day, I was just thinking about and it and it uh, triggered this for me, this memory that what you were saying that when in my healing work in my in my prayer work i was thinking about that even in prayer work we tend to have this feeling of i need to get something done i need mm -hmm. to move into a certain mm -hmm. awareness or i need to dissolve this problem with my uh, affirmations and so on and um actually that's part of the the mentality of the world of linear time where we think we're not already in the place that we need to be. And mm -hmm. um, the divine is right here with us already. And the expression of our good is already complete on every level of our being. And actually, this happened to me after listening to some of your podcasts, I moved into that reflection and I felt this um, new kind of ability to let go in my own um, inner work and that was related to uh, sort of releasing this feeling that, uh, that I'm getting somewhere. So of course ah. we're thinking of time when we're finishing um, a cycle and at the same time, it's a great moment to accept our own power to look beyond the sense of uh, having to push forward and having to run away. In this case, I think a lot of people are feeling like running away from 2020. Yeah. And uh, No, but, this has really been an incredible experience, right? I mean, that's what uh, you, all of us on that level of, of, you know, reality are working on is like, oh, well, thank God we got here. Now let's, let's party on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. And you're right. Thank God we got here. I mean, we made it through the year. <laughs> so, and that's a blessing. Um, right. And but we can also think of this moment as one to instead of like, uh, push ourselves forward, kind of pull aside the curtains and look at visible realm that's the this uh, presence of infinite good that responds to our attention and we access that when we stop projecting our power onto outer events whether it's the calendar whether it's uh, the world at large apparent systems pluto has been moving through capricorn since 2008 and this has been a big uh, evolutionary opportunity uh capricorn another earth sign like taurus um, being related to systems. And so systems uh, have been altered. And at the same time, this has been a path of power, and which is also a good thing to remember because we can feel so overwhelmed by outer appearances that we somehow disconnect with the sense of purpose. And we do have our purpose. And Pluto has been in some way for each of us since 2008 um, – connecting us to our path of power. And that time of Pluto and Capricorn is going to um, 
uh, pass by in 2021, this new year, as uh, Pluto leaves Capricorn finally and moves into Aquarius, which is a transit that Jupiter and Saturn okay, are. Okay, so let are, me stop you there, making. because sure. I think what you're referring to is the illusion, right, and the truth of your pattern of each of ours, our path, our our path. You know, we get we get caught up in the illusion, which is the opposite, the contrast. So people are really getting clear and they come to a standstill because everything isn't working or there's been this explosion, this rising up of all this that's been contained and finally has gotten a certain amount of oomph behind it collectively. And so what is really showing up, and this is why we're all excited about where we are in this time, is because their people's real truths not their illusionary truths because you know because we so often are complicit and complacent and just following along and this is awakening each of us is can use this opportunity to wake up to what truly motivates us and what truly uh we'd like to leave as, as our as our experience of being in form yeah, that, that last point particularly, what we'd like to leave as uh, our, part of our experience in form is very much uh, apropos for Capricorn, the energies of Capricorn, which Pluto has been in because Capricorn produces tangible results. And yeah. <laughs> many of us have, expect, have experienced this in relationship somehow to our work lives, it. whether it yeah. be uh, professional work, uh, what you called a little while ago, the day-to-day -day, mm -hmm. uh, grind, and, or our inner work. Somehow it's something that uh, has required a concentrated effort and sometimes has felt felt overwhelming, but we've also had opportunities, including this year, even um, since February, when there were contacts between Pluto and Jupiter, and into May, and then later in at the end of the, the last year, 2020, I mean, um, we've had opportunities that have, and in, in 2015 was another time of opportunity, where if you want to look, whoever's listening to us, uh, look back at the events of your life then, and uh, see what, what relates to these time frames that have also allowed kind Kind of uh, pushing us along on the path of um, consolidating whatever it is that we've been working on. And so that's something that um, has been intense, but it's also been a blessing. And um, it's been particularly expanded by the connection with Jupiter, where Jupiter is a planet of expansion and Pluto is uh, the smallest, uh, darkest planet in the solar system that um, has been kind of blown up in its effects. It usually works in a more hidden manner with the connection with Jupiter. So it's been like the evolutionary path has sort of been blown up in, in our faces and um, not only in bad ways, but also in, in good ways in terms of opportunities. And now Jupiter has moved into Aquarius. So this is going to be kind of um, a collective sense of relief in some ways, as well as Saturn also moving into oh, okay. Aquarius. There, so, there's going to be a lightening up in that sense. All right. So everyone... Just be noticing. As you listen in, you can see she's got lots of information. And whether you're into astrology or not, doesn't really matter. But we're looking at how the experience of opening up, how the experience of what has been bottled up in this year that's come out. And so just notice. There we go. Let yourself feel the state deepening. Whoa, something's deepening. <laughs> okay, all right. Wow. There you go. And just let yourself enjoy this moment. We're coming up on the end of this year. And I think what would be fun, um, Crystal is... 
since everything's a spectrum and the, you know there's all, all so many different perspectives that we can talk tell tell us about how we started with the new year's eve thing what are these traditions that we seem to have fallen in whether we're into them or not and uh this history where this is coming from this is coming sure. from the romans right janus and stuff about january yeah. and stuff Oh yeah, definitely. And really, in terms of our Western thought and how we practice it with the with the calendar today, our modern calendar, which was the Gregorian calendar originally. Okay, that, and that's from Roman influence. Got yeah. it. And everyone, just just hold that thought. I'm sorry, everyone. Information is moving all around, whether you know it or not. And what I want you to do in this unfolding is she's going to bring us to old information, traditions as old as man in some of them, and older, right? Because we're late, Johnny come lately to the party here. (laughs) And appreciating different biases, perceptions, influences that may be in you in a place of knowing, not conscious thought, but you catches your attention. And you go, oh, and you'll find these places because we're going to be many places in the cosmos and here. So as she describes some of this, which we can't do a lot in the, in the time we have together, but we're going to go places and we're going to go into the past. We're going to go into the future. We're going to go into different realms, whether they be angelic or whatever they might be. And all of that will be present to us. So just notice where you go and enjoy yourself. And hang on. It could be a bumpy ride. Slip and sliding. All right. So tell us about <laughs> tell us about the Romans and stuff. Okay. Um, well, these, like you said, are actually... Uh, derived from earlier traditions, uh, Janus being the the god of Jan- for whom January was named, and ha- being a god that has a face looking into the past and a face looking into the future. So, so he's it's perfect, a, or, right? He's a yeah, perfect he organizational is, he really perfect. model. Yes. Okay. Exactly. Got it. Yeah. And uh, this is um, particularly interesting. This idea of uh, the god that is at the portal. Um, of the end of cycles and the beginning of cycles um, of such an important cycle of the new year, which has become uh, a worldwide, of course, festivity. It's not celebrated at the same uh, date in all places, but it is in many places. And plus the whole idea of the new year is a universal idea. That is, that's important because the morphic field around the new year is related to new beginnings. And so, and there's also this festivity related to it, which is very positive because when we think about celebrating new beginnings, then the the feeling of excitement, the feeling of hope, the feeling of um, can do that relates to something new is um, a collective energy that we can connect to positively as we think about what we choose to manifest in the cycle ahead. And this was actually a common ancestral practice to think about New Year's intentions, to think about New Year's goals, and some connected it more to the solstice or to energies even earlier in December, and others into um, mid-January. And we've got also the new moon in Capricorn, which is going to be this year on January 13th, which is usually a really great time. It's an even better time to um, to set or to firm up our New Year's intentions, writing them down, what we want to manifest in Capricorn. It's a sign of goals, which is why we have this organizational instinct at the beginning of January. And we've got Mercury going into pre-retrograde shadow on the 15th. So uh, we can use this window of from the 11th when we're already moving into the new, new moon portal to the 14th with this energy of newness to write down our attentions and also to act on them so that the Mercury pre-retrograde won't be um, creating more of connection to the past astrologically speaking. And so anyway, this is a great window to reaffirm again your 
um, intentions, your your New Year's intentions. You know, just a minute here, Crystal. I, I'm I'm where I find myself going in my uh, uh, thinking, awareness, whatever it might be. Here is the appreciation that somebody observed a pattern long, 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 long time ago, whether this was earth awareness or human awareness or whoever's it was, because you're, you're describing how it seems to be the pattern that things, be, things end, things begin. And we've got it orchestrated to a timing device right and we develop seasons we develop everything around this massive that what was will come around again and it's not always that it's the same place it may look like the same couple of days but that in any pattern um it has a place where it can be different. So what I'm getting hit with here is the the information that just because we may have been here before does not mean it's exactly the same as it was. And that's that mental habit we have of, okay, once we do it, that's it. And then we don't have to think about it again. But you're calling upon, I can feel the circadian energy, the, the, the cycling. There's really this physical sense of cycling in the body of that, get, that we get lost, that gets lost. And you're bringing us this awareness of the timing and time is malleable time and space totally are malleable and yeah. you slow down enough and that's one thing that earth energy in our awareness of that with Anne was that this is where you can feel so everybody be noticing i'm feeling a very in a in um not so much physical, it's beyond human references, but it's the appreciation of what we're so busy not noticing. And that when these, when once again we have January, for instance, once again when we have December, once again when we have the holiday, once again, where are we in relation to it the last time? Everything being a spectrum, there are places where what was does not have to be. And that this is really about being now, the being present. You can really feel this opening that's possible, Crystal, that we can just say, oh, this is just part of a pattern. Let me relax into it and see where it takes me. Are you catching that at all? I'm really, it's a, it's a very interesting place. It, it is very interesting, especially when we think of our creative relationship to it. Okay. And yeah. what you, what you were saying at the beginning of the, of today's transmission about the delight, you know, the option mm -hmm. of delight. And when we think about celebrating, we can connect with that aspect. That's the aspect of delight, which may be not so easy this year because um, there's been for a lot of people, so many challenges mm -hmm. and yeah. our empathy about that or yeah. our kind of collective, uh, community concern may tend to make us feel like, uh, kind of guilty about how am I going to be in delight when there are all these people that have gone through so much yeah. tough stuff. Right. And, but this is kind of like a morphic field of sacrifice, this idea that we're somehow supposed to not enjoy life uh, the moment because um, there's there have been a lot of people going through challenge when really our own ability to access the joy within us and around us lifts the entire planetary frequency. So right, right. Um, what what you were just guiding us on um, brings me to the idea of giving ourselves permission to connect with this in, in a joyful way, in the joy of the day, the joy of the moment, and releasing um, uh, fixed ideas or fears related to the future and uh, just um, caring for our present thought 
and um, our, our present uh, opportunity for gratitude and for joy and going about um, setting intentions with that on that vibration, but also understanding that we're not victims of whatever cycles are changing. We're yeah, not even that, victims of yeah. stars. That, that, that's probably one, one issue people have with astrology is that the idea that it's all predicated and where does free will happen and all these kind of concerns and in you know for me astrology is marvelous at like predicting the weather right <laughs> you know as, as my friend uh joan used to say on as my co-host on my other show um you know in using that's how she used astrology it was like it, it, it gave you notice you know it could tell, tell you about things and but it's also um what you empower right see these are the exactly. reality sets so how exactly. do you want to use huh? it yes and and that's what we want to be open to so it's not that reading the daily horoscope is always right it may be sometimes right it may be how you relate to the to the whole notice that there's information out there that you can tag so all right so we we've got uh we've all right that was and that's lovely how you bring up about the joy about um experiencing the moment and that's your setup that's all of our setups and so this is a wonderful invitation everyone to notice collapsing systems and you mentioned systems earlier crystal and i think that's one thing that's been so strong this season the last couple of seasons here this year is our awareness of systems that have not been responding and need an update and a new new premise to them that what was was in that context and in that time and how do we allow it to go forward and better be serving what we've all created because you're talking often about the morphic resonance we share in creating our reality which is what this show is all about is appreciating how our thoughts create i think you mentioned there was something that the mex the mexican culture does about uh setting intentions in a tree because the oh, tree yeah, will nourish so it beautiful. it sounded lovely so share that yeah. with us well, well, thank you. The the pagan uh, traditions of many cu cultures take into account the energy of trees at this time of year, and it's been a topic that's fascinated me since childhood. And I was so excited when I came to Mexico and learned about this tradition, this New Year's Yule tradition that gives probably fills in some blanks in terms of our understanding of, of the true origins of, of Christmas trees. That has It's a topic that's been analyzed in uh, by different researchers but um, and, and who talk about uh, trees being a connection between the sky with the lightning and the bringing in the fire that's warm in uh, winter being a symbol of the newborn sun when they burn sort of thing. But I really resonate with this Mexican um approach because ancient mexican approach they the their calendar was divided in periods of 20 days with and so they these are called ventenas in spanish and i can't pronounce how they were called uh, before the spanish and um the, <laughs> those incas uh, or something else <laughs> yeah, yeah and uh, all these consonants together and yes, um, yes yeah so so the um, period of 20 days related to the close of the year and the opening of a new year, a new solar year, was called uh, Pan Quetzalitzli, which means the raising of, of the banners. And so what the banners are, are little strips of bark paper on which they would write their intentions in terms of um, being their best selves, so to speak, which is probably a very Western term. But uh, yeah, what, they, right. what they wanted to achieve in terms of um, being more aligned with their with their higher purpose. 
and uh, their their inner way of vibrating because they had a, a quite a deep mystical tradition that it's important to take into account when we're talking about ancestral cultures that they went through different stages. So some of these cultures uh, were pretty violent and imperialistic, and um, but they came in and, and took up uh, wisdom that had been from former, earlier cultures that pretty much around the globe – as uh, Ryan Eisler discusses in her wonderful classic that's from the 80s, but it's, a, it's a, quite a beautiful book, The Chalice and the Blade, um, that around the globe, in independently of uh, whatever country continent you're, you're in and on, there were from three th- an average of 3,500 to, to 7,000 years ago, um, there was this switch into a culture that became much more violent, and um, with these uh, conquesting uh, tribes that would go along around and break up previous more peaceful cultures that had spiritual traditions that were that didn't involve sacrifice and they didn't involve uh, you know, taking the slaves of your um, whatever tribe or nation you uh, overtook and so forth. And um, a lot of this wisdom shines through in the traditions that are still alive in the oral um, communication and teachings. And in this case, for the period, the, the 20 day ventena um, of the raising of the banners, it was um, putting your intentions, like, say, uh, for this year, I could have uh, between my intentions to spend more time in the the transmutation of appearances mode that I'm in when I'm giving healing treatments and um, when I'm giving unblocking treatments to be in that space more time so that I'm more connected to this uh, divine reality when I'm going about my daily activities, for instance. Or it could be um, come moving into a deeper experience of forgiveness or um, awakening the the spark of, of kindness in my heart and connection to my guardian angel or whatever other people's uh, intentions may be. This is um, the the free aspect where we're co-creators and choosers of our of our paths. And then they would write down these intentions and tie them to trees, living trees in nature. And they would be perennial trees that would be imbuing their intentions with what they consider to be the heroic spirit of the trees, which is such a beautiful metaphor. And um, it certainly, um, how should I say, enriches uh, our idea about about trees and their intelligence, which is being studied and, and mm-hmm. proven by mm-hmm. scientists who today uh, talk about um, the intelligence of plants and the intelligence of trees. But for ancestral cultures, it was the the plant spirit, the consciousness of the plant that somehow um, was helping and helping the environment and helping humans also when when called on. And so, this energy of the trees that are that continue to grow even in winter's cold and that we want to have that kind of steadfastness, that kind of um, uh, commitment to growing, to reaching for the heights of our being, which the trees do with the branches reaching for towards the sun, that is going to sustain us in this connection. And so... This has a lot to do with um, early um, roots, I'm sure, of the Christmas tree and Mm -hmm. bringing in this energy of a perennial tree into our space, which um, is is kind of become a more commercial thing, a more uh, like you said about at the beginning of um, today's transmission, you were talking about. Uh, people may have some sort of um, practice or they may just be involved with the New Year's tradition through habit, you know, because this is what everybody does. And um, so this um, habit of having a tree, we can turn it into something more exciting or even having a sprig or a branch or going outside, which would be even uh, more special going out to an area where there aren't a lot of people. Well, no, that's, that's an advantage. There aren't a lot of people anywhere. So um, <laughs> <laughs> they weren't too uh, worried about it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Really? 
and uh, we can make um, uh, so is this pay- something that happened just you said the the period was 20 days so did yeah. they do this every 20 days or on particular ones like no December this or start this would start in it's, it there were some variations between um, areas because uh, there are different groups there are a whole lot of different language groups um, in indigenous Mexico and so there were different groups that would have some slight variation in the days, just like we have uh, some places on the planet that celebrated Christmas in mid-December uh, and others that uh, celebrated the New Year in uh, uh, mid-January. And, of course, China that uh, celebrates in the Aquarius New Moon, which is in February, um, their New Year. But um, there were some variations, but generally it was um, from early December – to late December or mid-December into early uh, January. Okay. So let's take an update of this, everyone. So let's put our skill sets to work here. She's brought this wonderful raising of the banners. So in your mind's eye, in being present, I want you to just notice what it would be like to be able to write down on a piece of tree bark. We'll call it tree bark. Ash is wonderful for that. There's always peeling their barks off. And put a mark or a symbol or write. Allow it to be an intention. And what it would be like to absolutely be in a state of respect and trust that your environment supports you that it is breathing also and that we are together in this and what it would be like to take that and tie it to the tree and allow it this winter to catch the wind to catch the environments to notice how trees of knowledge right every tree is a tree of knowledge and it will utilize and support you so not only like an angelic being the tree has its own gift also and what it would be like to just this season do a little different and just utilize what is already there so be present when you're doing it so just notice yourself doing this take it from a place of inspiration outside motivation that's inspiring you to take action you don't even know how have to know what you're writing just allow it to flow allow trust allow connection and just release it on the wind Now, I notice a lot of traditions use the transcendence of fire to to take us from this to that. Um, Do you have a reference here, another force that, that, you know, so often we will burn something. We'll write something down and then we'll empower it to, and, and in the fire of it, it changes it. You know, the ashes change the reality state of what that thought was. Do you, are there any traditions like that here? Uh, well, in the case, I would just like to finish the, the tree part that you mm-hmm. are so beautifully guiding right now because there is this connection with the breathing. In fact, it's a physical connection, too, of the trees that are giving off oxygen and, and using up our carbon dioxide. So each time we breathe, they're, they're somehow breathing with us. I really liked the way you expressed that. And in winter... It's an energy where they're bringing down the the solar fire, which has mm, become mm-hmm. much weaker apparently because this the sun has gone down in its angle in relationship to the earth. It's become weaker in the sky, but the trees use that uh, that twinkling, use that radiance that they can glean and uh, use it for their growth, for their processes of uh, photosynthesis and. Um, that's what we're, we can ask them. We can literally uh, talk to the tree or the trees and ask them, ask the, the angel of that tree, the angel of the forest to imbue us with our will to grow, to continue to grow and to learn too, because it's going to be an expansive um, area in the astrology for 2021 learning. Mm, and really? 
Yeah, and um, be having disciplines related to learning, and which is uh, such a wonderful activity. It keeps us alive. And when the using the fire to close a cycle, yes, this is really uh, beautiful. And I, I like uh, doing a, a little ceremony at the end of the year, which is important to um, take into account, like from a standpoint of personal awareness, not, not, I think for me, not just get into the movements, the motions of the ceremony, but know that this is uh, the best rituals are actually inner rituals. And so um, we can imagine that their place in our minds, in our space, um, a portal and with uh, some tall angels standing on on either side of it, and I'm sure you could do a lovely uh, okay. guided um, <laughs> relaxation right. for this. And the angels um, on on each side are the angels of they're two, they're tall, they're angels of endings and beginnings. And um, we can walk up, like make in our minds a little pathway, walking up to these angels. And um, when we get there, before crossing through the doorway, write down on on a piece of paper what we want to leave behind with the year that's passing we we take in so much so much into account these days uh co-creation and the law of attraction Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. doing this and doing that and um there's this other side of energy which is about letting go and about eliminating Mm -hmm. that we can connect with and then write down what we want to let go and we can even write across that list of what we want to let go we can write across transmuted by the angels of endings and um, we can do this on purple paper if we want which is a great color for transmutation and then burn that in um, with a a white candle that we've previously lit burn that and um, see how how the angels are uh, dissolving with their light along with the fire, all that we want to let go of. And then walking through the portal and asking the angels of beginnings to uh, empower our new intents and uh, write down our intentions of what we want to make, what we want to see come about, what we want to receive in the new year. Oh, well, this is fun. All right. So we have angels of endings and beginnings, which is a new concept to me, but I'll totally trust you on that. And to that the fact that we did the tree ceremony first is appropriate because that's where we want to be right that is the best so here we've got an opportunity everyone so in your mind's eye just allow yourself to notice what you'd like to let go of so just let and allow that information to be present and put it on your purple paper and hand it to the angels of endings I love this yeah. All right. And then on another piece, I'm going to set it up this way, Crystal. Okay. Another piece, just allow yourself to go, ah, this is me in the future. This is me having what it is I think I want. And don't be taken with that you have to know all that. Trust that your commitment is real. And hand that to the angel of beginnings. Now what do we notice? What are you noticing about life? Well, Uh, I'm noticing that one great intention for this year is having our heart connection with harmonious intuition, our heart connection to the realm of our infinite being that we all have it's our heart connection is spirit a spiritual connection and aware connection that keeps us in in harmony and helps us to be centered in kindness to to one another because there have been going on a lot in the um, past couple of months and and before that too a lot of um, discord especially <laughs> in the U.S. and yeah. Uh, yeah. political issues and. So on both sides of um, the the apparent uh, discussions, there there's been an um, that's that's not been respectful. That's been uh, many times like insulting from one mm-hmm. side to the other, and mm-hmm. with uh, a lot of feeling of hostility. And it's so, like children acting out, you know, very young children acting out. 
<laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, yeah. and it's like everybody, you got to pull up your big girl, big boy pants and get off the pot here. <laughs> you, know, you know, this is this, you know, snap out of it. <laughs> yeah, well, you go between dimensions, Janet, but that one was definitely on the on the planet, uh, and feet on the planet, and yeah. um, rooted in the here and now. And we can also work within to uh, assist this ambience by mentally pro- visualizing and projecting. Um, the hosts of the Angels of Harmony into the streets, into the countryside, in our minds around the country, opening up a quantum space for these light beings, these sentient fields that are bringing in energy of love, of harmony, of kindness that can um, prevail when we open a door that way. Okay, and so since that's what we do here, um, everyone, I want you to notice... Right. Crystal is is making us aware again of the support that's around us. And she's got angels up there that do all kinds of things. And, and I love so do you. It. So yeah, I'm sure I know we all do. I just don't hold them in quite that awareness. So so and and I don't know I think you could be the one who notices it. So let's take what she's saying. We're in that state here. But expand it because so often we get caught up in the in the reality belief of self that says we're small. Okay, this is what needs to end this year. This is what you want to put on your list, people. That you need you want to get rid of is that you're small because you're not, and we're sharing sharing with you. The wonder that you hold inside. Now, so if you're small, I can't do anything. That's often what the input is of a child who's surrounded by bigger adults, right? And if, if I cry a lot, maybe I'll get someone's attention. And maybe someone will hold me and all that sort of stuff. So that's one manip- way, one way to manipulate. So let's get a little bigger. Realize that we have supportive champions around us. All of us do. Whether we knew it or not, we do. And allow them to see your army, if you want to get militaristic, or your companions use find the term that works for you that's not into inflaming and inciting riot but into expressing compassion and empathy for another what if there was a whole community of individuals in form and out of form that were present as you looked to find meaning in your life what would this be like this is what we offer you in active transcendent reality right in this moment so just notice in the cosmos it's one small blue dot the earth is and it is everything everything There is nothing small. That's the illusion of size that you're involved in. But when you take it into formless, there is nothing else except consciousness, the infinite. It is everywhere. Everything fits into that. So as we end this year, bring this awareness in. Notice how things shift just a little bit. Doesn't You don't have to conquer the world. This isn't about that. This is about you reframing how you engage in your life. And take all the help imagined, not imagined, don't even have a concept of, but be open. And what would it be like to have assistance yourself there I think this is the, the part of the challenge you know uh, in our illusions crystal is that yeah. you know we 
And it's not that it's out there. This is all within each of us, the core of consciousness, that all that is is within each of us. And this is this is the truth of being that is you know like point oh 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 one <laughs> of awareness for most of us <laughs> so so there we go so now what are we noticing so now we're we're noticing that we are supported and that we are accompanied and that there are millions of these positive light beings that are filling up the streets, filling up all areas. There, There's this strong love energy coming through of kindness that is dissolving any apparent I, I'm getting a sense of like little fireflies. Okay. You know, the, just clouds of fireflies. And there's your fire. Yeah, there's your fire. And there they are and then they're, then they're not. And it's the the reality that allows for something to be and then when it collapses into a reality that it's not and we're always those are so close together they're right on each other on the side of each other and it's so you blink and you're in one reality and then you blink and you can be in a different reality and how in clouds of fireflies or fairies that are lit up or some life form right i mean we can have all our illusions of what those things are it's just that it's that spark so it's like the the comet across the sky the tail of where you see the stardust and this it's just because we don't see it doesn't mean it's not there and it's just a matter of lighting. You would notice it if you were in different circumstances. So we are so often assuming by what we think we see when what we see is really just a bias and it's a story element and an illusion. And we forget those things. So thank you. I see, I see fireflies everywhere. I like it. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> A lot of people want to see fireflies. <laughs> yeah. You know, just right at night in the summertime, right? Is usually when you see them, I suppose. But Yeah, and, and supposedly it's harder and harder to see them, but we can think of, with your suggestion, we can think of seeing them now. Yeah. Why wait? <laughs> so... How would we like to wrap this up, Crystal? This has been just so lovely with our discussion and, and where we are now with fireflies. You had mentioned the, the story of the epiphany. And what does that have to offer? How does that fit into all this? And Well, well, New Year's was a time in which gifts were exchanged. And in, in ancient Rome on New Year's Day, a lot of people would, would exchange gifts and uh, the Roman goddess of the New Year's is called Strenia, and uh, they would, in honor of her, they would carry around branches with uh, sweets and uh, other gifts, other like simple um, gifts tied to them, and they would have this in a ceremony and then would give these to each other. And again, we have this tree energy Mm -hmm. brought in, and (laughs) the gift the gift giving continues archetypally through epiphany, which is when, according to the Christian tradition, you have uh, the greeting of the wise men for the baby Jesus who's come into the world and they bring him gifts of gold, of myrrh, and of incense. And we, we each has a has a metaphysical uh, symbolism to it, each of the gifts. But there's it's it's fascinating to know to that there's um there are previous archetypes of this reception of the child that is also connected with the date of in, at which the sun in its position from winter solstice when it was tiny and is slowly growing in the sky it is moving to a place where we can get more visible sunlight we're starting to feel that sun rising it's no longer the the winter darkness mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. that's uh that prevails and so 
for other ancient cultures, this was connected to uh, the reception of Mother Earth, uh, Demeter in both uh, Greece and Rome, who is greeting her daughter, who had been sequestered by Pluto, the, the god of the underworld, and taken uh, downstairs into the dark for six months and is now coming back to the surface for her six months that she will spend um, in the visible world, which is when the sunlight is also going to be prevailing. And the sunlight was thought to be provided by the mother goddess who is happy to have her, her daughter return. And so her daughter is received with a great celebration and, and with presence and with this joy of the reencounter between uh, the daughter who um, uh, Barbara um, Walker says, who's, write, who's written these beautiful books, these dictionaries of goddess uh, um, and so forth, uh, says, compares to the inner soul, the symbol symbolizing the inner soul of the mother goddess. And so she comes into the light and this is uh, a big celebration with um, candles and with gifts and uh, with shared joy that um, also involves in some cultures the cutting of a cake with babies inside it. This was oh. done in Europe. In okay. So done to Dan, Mexico, probably from the Spanish influence. Um, and so the whoever gets the baby or the king or the queen, those are also little tiny figures that are sometimes put in this, are, is going to be like um, sort of the queen for the day or the king for the day. And um, then at uh, the Virgin of Candlemas Day, which is in early February, that same person is going to invite the others to an, another meal. And so, the, which is another subject, it's really fascinating. Candlemas is another really interesting. This, this sounds like it has a lot of Mardi Gras right. in it, information, and you can hear, hear all these different cultural, you know, influences coming around. Yeah, and it's also, there's a joyousness to it. And this reconnection with our with our own inner light, so to speak, it could be taken that way. And also recognizing the inner light of others and seeing how there there's this awakeness in us that you that you talk a lot about, and that it, giving others presence with this uh, certainty that the present is not just a physical gift, but it's a um, symbol of this recognition and a blessing like the gold uh, is abundance. And uh, Rudolf Steiner says that the gold is also uh, kingly power. We could say queenly power. And uh, the myrrh is about um, healing in relationship to the plant energy and the transmuting and um, dissolving uh, difficult memories and um, bitterness of the past. And so we, we can give each other presence, not only physically, but all, which, which is of course, very joyous and joyful to, to give gifts, but all, and see other people's faces when they receive them and stuff um, beautifully wrapped up and, uh, and put an intention in the gift along with that of what, we are wishing for the other person for the upcoming year and with our blessing. So it's not only us, it's what we share with others. And it's, it's, it's our, um, our relation to others around us and wishing them well. So, uh, Crystal, thank you. There is so much here that we, we have a chance to play with. And um, what a wonderful way to end 2020 and look forward to 2021. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dan. It's been, it's been a joy, a great joy for me. Crystal provides us with a bibliography of references for this episode. The story of Jesus' birth, death, and resurrection bears a striking resemblance to those of earlier mystery cults revolving around a divine mother and her son, or as in the worship of Demeter and Kor, her daughter, 
And that's Rayon Esler from the Chalice and the Blade, Harbor, San Francisco. And Janice, for who January was named, the god who could see into the past, present, and future. That's Susan Pesnecker and the book Yule Llewellyn Publications. January is sacred to the Roman god Janus, the two-faced divinity, who is the male equivalent of the goddess Juno Janus, Nigel Pennock, the pagan book of days, destiny books. The twelfth day of Christmas was originally the Epodia, the Epiphany of Kor, which later became the day of the coming of the wise men to view the holy babe, now masculine. Lawrence Durden Robertson the year of the goddess the Aquarian press and for more on the saturn jupiter conjunction and its influences in 2021 she invites you to check her predictions for december 2020 and january 2021 at daykeeper journal affirmative astrology for challenging times and at crystal underscore clear always at yahoo.com you will be able to find out more about the two rituals she mentioned first the ancient mexican ritual the raising of the banners where you write your intentions to be better persons on strips of bark paper and then tie them on perennial trees so that the tree's heroic energy will bless them with its force for growth and resilience and her other angel ritual where you write down your intentions burning it and then going through the doorway where the angels of endings and beginnings seal the door and open the way to your new path. Here are some quotes to contemplate. Participant is the new word to describe what once was called observer. In some mysterious way, humans participate in everything we observe. That's John Archibald Wheeler, theoretical physicist. To each living thing, the mother gave a temporary form that would eventually dissolve back once more into the infinite, churning a cauldron of potential where matters and energies are constantly exchanged and recombined. She made the world an image of that uterine cauldron so that every life form sustains itself by absorbing, decomposing, and assimilating other forms. Barbara Walker, American writer and feminist. Our featured meditation from Interlude, an internet retreat, will return in the new year. You can reach Crystal for alchemy empowerment and unblocking sessions, various courses working with angels, and in-depth astrological and numerological charts at crystal underscore clear always at yahoo.com or through her website www.crystalpomeroy.com. Follow her on Facebook as Crystal Pomeroy, author and healer, and Instagram as crystal underscore clear always. It's been frustrating to write a blog for this episode. I haven't had one clear focus. Both you and I have been enjoying all the portals that Crystal has provided us with as this year comes to an end. And end of years are about the year in review, and mine is also focused on another remarkable year of this podcast. It has been my delight and saving grace at times. I think I will save that for my first episode in January 2021, that is in a couple of weeks. With endings come conclusions. Here are some of mine as we call it a wrap on this year. The uproar of this last year in virus, politics and democracy, racial bias, and the collapse of so much we take for granted, like the air, shared breath, and paychecks, it's kept us very busy. We have all felt under assault and daily routines compromised. Much will never be the same. How do we choose to live together, and what is it that takes for a society to stand in grace and harmony? 
maybe is not important at all, but it is to me. I look to provide a sense of something different for us to experience. Whatever is out there is a reflection of our inner worlds. You know that. How you think forms your sense of reality. The questions we find ourselves shaking our heads about have origin in someone's thinking and feelings. What version of reality are they living in? Certainly different than mine. I have seen this year through the filter of respect and unfortunately too many instances of lack of respect. Rudeness, fear, yelling, the manipulation of the truth to convince others who are not in the know, denial, resistance, rebelling, destruction, killing another so often have at basis a lack of respect being directed at the other. When you value another as yourself, it is different than when you don't. We are each entitled to our opinions, we may say, but maybe that is not saying enough. We each are entitled to our opinions with respect for our differences and similarities. I might not agree with you, but you have value to society. Even those we don't agree with have some sort of value, either as lesson or as one to emulate. We are spectrum-based life forms, or we would all be the same, and we are as individuals as humans. Human, but not the same. We call it basic decency. Treat others as you would like to be treated. Pretty simple. When we don't hold ourselves with respect, with worthiness, how can we offer it to others? We hopefully have come to realize our connectedness with all around us. Oneness is real. Social distancing has made everyone aware of our shared breath and how powerful we each are. We can make sick and even kill each other just by breathing on them. Our emotional maturity seems at play. Many people are unaware of how they affect another. Respect can be as simple as passing another person on the street and you're not wearing a mask while they are. You are unaware of their internal conversation. They are thinking, I don't know you, you don't know me, but I'm feeling regarded as less than by your actions. You may be secure in your worldview of reality, and if they comment, you get upset, but their reality may allow for them to feel ill effects and have a different relationship to the virus. They have worry where you have denial or apathy running. As consciousness, we are all beyond that. We appreciate the humanity present and realize its limits. And we touch the place within that reaches out beyond our human definitions, those limitations that define us. We embrace that which cannot be described, only felt as the essence of life, the spirit within to be found in being. Thank you for joining me here. Let's do it again. Happy Holidays. Hi, I'm Boyd Martin, sound engineer for Janet Barrett's amazing podcast, Journeys into Enlightenment. I also own PureEnergyRx.com, where quantum physics meets health and wellness. We feature nutritional formulas and elixirs based on the breakthrough research of physicist Dr. Yuri Krohn and his team, who infuse formulas and elixirs with subtle energies that enhance health and wellness. Check it all out at PureEnergyRx.com. And as a listener to Journeys into Enlightenment, use discount code JIE20 for 20% off all things store-wide. Thank you for joining me here at Journeys to Enlightenment with Janet. A new episode is released every two weeks. Any questions or thoughts or guests you'd like to suggest, you can email me directly at Janet and Beyond Podcast at Outlook.com. For more information about all the elements that make up each episode, they are on my podcast page at my website, www.JanetAndBeyond.com. While there, you will also find information about my other podcast show, Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet, and all about my work with clients. You can sign up to receive my regular weekly blog, Life in the Beyond, Journeys into Enlightenment. 
If you are looking for other regular opportunities to sit in heart-centered awareness with myself and others, you can join us in my Fuzzy Photons playground groups I offer on Wednesdays. Live interactive space via Zoom video conferencing. You can follow each episode of this podcast series on my YouTube channel, Journeys into Enlightenment with Janet Barrett. Till the next time, notice what feels different right in this moment. It is real and it can last a lifetime.